Warnings come up. The so-called FIRE Act, authored by Senator Alex Padilla, would allow the Federal Emergency Management Agency's resources to be placed in local jurisdictions when red flag conditions are first announced, not waiting until after a fire happens. Padilla says the concept just makes sense, and if a disaster does happen, the payoff will be almost immediate. Let's get resources and personnel in position to either try to minimize the, the scale of a disaster, but certainly to be able to respond more quick in the event of a disaster. It would improve relocation more quickly, that our critical infrastructure is rebuilt more resiliently after a disaster. The measure having passed the Senate is now headed for the House and backers are hoping it can get a green light from the White House before the end of the year. Pete Demetrio, KNX News, 97.1 FM. A report by L.A. City Controller Ron Galpern concludes that Los Angeles is vulnerable to disasters because of a lack of emergency preparedness programs. The study finds the Emergency Management Department has insufficient dedicated plans to cover any number of disasters, such as cybersecurity threats and the challenges of climate change, drought, and earthquakes. The report also noted that there is no regular assessment of supplies and equipment. Tom Brady says he's sorry for remarks he made that offended a number of people. The Tampa Bay quarterback compared the NFL season to military deployment. The comment got lots of backlash on social media. Meeting with reporters, Tom Brady said he is sorry. Earlier this week, I made a statement about playing football in the military, and uh, it was a very poor choice of words. Brady is also having a tough year on the field. Right now, his team is just 3-3. Three and three. Steve Futterman, CBS News. Declining enrollment is still plaguing colleges and universities across the country. Doug Shapiro is with the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center. He says sticker shock and years of debt are sending potential students straight into the workforce. And he says colleges are trying to adjust, at least in terms of flexibility. There are colleges that are trying to provide more courses in shorter time frames. They're trying to provide more online and hybrid course offerings to give students more flexibility, particularly if they're trying to work part-time as they're also going to school. The latest drop is 1.1%. Now, the good news is that's not nearly as steep as the record 6.5% decline over the first two years of the pandemic. 620, we're checking your money with Larry Kofsky. Major freight railroads are pushing back against demands from track maintenance workers for additional paid sick time, raising the chances of a nationwide rail strike. The workers last week rejected a five-year contract that called for 24% raises. Ad sales at Snap are growing at the slowest rate ever. The maker of the Snapchat app says third quarter sales rose just 6% as advertisers retreat in the face of inflation and other economic pressures. It was a down day on Wall Street with interest rate worries sending buyers to the sidelines. Dow Industrials lost 90. The S&P 500 tumbled 29. The Nasdaq fell 66. He's already on the Brooklyn Nets, but now Kevin Durant is part of another team. He's purchasing a major league pickleball team as the upstart sport expands. Other high-profile athletes, including LeBron James and Tom Brady, have also invested in the league. We check your money at 20 and 50 after every hour. I'm Bloomberg's Larry Kofsky from the California Deluxe Windows Money Desk, KNX News, 97.1 FM. Our Mike Simpson is answering questions in his podcast about what goes on at the dry cleaners. More coming up at 621. The voices you trust are on L.A.'s morning news. It's not just reading the news. It's telling people, this impacts you. I have kids that go to school here. I drive around town. I take the bus sometimes. I go to restaurants. And I think about that as I'm gathering news, how that matters to people. Hear Vicki Moore on L.A.'s morning news. Weekdays on KNX News. If you've been involved in a motorcycle accident, call 844-24-JACOB. Careful, there's a problem on the Vincent Thomas Bridge in San Pedro. Brian's got you. It's 623. It's a routine for so many of us. Drop off the clothes at the dry cleaners and pick them up a few days later. But well, what really goes on back there? How does it work? Mike Simpson gets answers on this week's I've Got Questions. <laughs> turns 
Now, this is one of those things that was discovered by accident. And on the podcast this week, we will take you through it. Okay, so it's not new. It's been around since the 1800s. The story goes, somebody spilled kerosene on a shirt. It took the stain with it when it evaporated. The slight issue, though, super flammable. Don't go near a candle. So we'll tell you what they use today, why this works, and if dry cleaning is actually dry. So technically, the garments aren't wet. But it's still a liquid. This is also a quick question. It's a couple different topics. The other one's eye rolling. There's a reason, evolutionarily, that some of us do this when we're not too happy. Mike Simpson, KNX News, 97.1 FM. You can find I've Got Questions on Odyssey or wherever you get your podcast and send us your questions. There's a link at knxnews.com. Former UCLA gynecologist found guilty on some counts in a sex assault case, not guilty on others. We have a live report coming up at the bottom of the hour at 625. This check of your traffic sponsored by Surpro Cleanup and Restoration. Here's Brian Douglas. Well, let's start with the Vincent Thomas Bridge and I did talk to a tipster and I appreciate it. We have a stall right lane, almost mid-span on the westbound side, so heading over to San Pedro, coming away from Terminal Island and you've got a little bit of a backup starting right about Navy Way, so if you've got a truck full of stuff or you just got a car and you're heading home, uh, you'll have some delays again on that, uh, Vincent Thomas. The, the uh, Getting away from the ports on that 110 northbound, not bad up to the 405 once you pass this problem. If you're using Long Beach uh, at the 710 as your way out of the port, and northbound side of the 710 looking pretty good, a little slowing up in the Linwood area. But that's about it, south 710. Uh, you do a slowing 60 down almost to Florence, and then your drive is pretty good. 91 westbound here in Carson. This will be right at Avalon. This is where we're working an injury crash. We do have a, a lane blocked by the fire department in West 91 from Central. So that's just one exit back. Uh, you are going to have a wee bit of slowing. That 110 I mentioned before, both directions really, really slow now. Big game in uh, Expo Park here. So northbound side really impacted more than anything else from Manchester. It's going to stay tough as you make your way pay, uh, through Expo Park into downtown. Our Santa Monica freeway is still very difficult coming out of uh, Santa Monica all the way in through downtown. That 134, uh, your drive. So you're traveling eastbound, maybe heading over to Glendale. You have a backup starting at Pass, Pass Avenue, and it's really tough into Glendale. And I just checked with CSB. Nothing reported, just a lot of volume. And Singular continues 57 north to the 60 west, where we've got a big rig that's overturned there. That transition road shut down. Whenever water damage strikes your home or business, call on the cleanup and restoration specialist at 1 800 Serve Pro to help make it like it never happened. That's 1 800 Serve Pro. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Next report, 635 from the ToyotaGlendora.com 24 hour traffic center. Close tonight in the 50s. And 60s, so pretty nice weather for that uh, soccer game at Expo Park. For tomorrow's gray start, I think it's really gray on Saturday with some passing showers, much cooler temperatures. We're talking 60s. Right now, downtown LA, 78 degrees. The jury's in place in the Harvey Weinstein rape trial. More coming up at 627. This is KNX News. One thing makes it greener tomorrow. What's your one thing? I'm Brian Ping. And I'm Karen Adams. A jury reaches a mixed verdict in the sex abuse trial of former UCLA gynecologist James Heats. Guilty of five counts, not guilty of seven. They were unable to reach verdicts on the remaining nine. Our Margaret Carrero was in the courtroom and has this live report. The judge declared a mistrial on the nine counts that the jury was deadlocked on, despite a request by the defense that Heaps be allowed to remain out on bond uh, pending sentencing. The judge remanded him into custody. Heaps' wife broke down in tears as he was handcuffed. They were not given a chance to say goodbye. Nicole was one of the charged victims in the case. I'm simply here to encourage anyone who's a survivor of this kind of sexual abuse from a trusted medical professional to trust your guts. Trust your instincts. They're an important part of who you are. Let them guide you. As difficult as it is, do not stay silent. Defense attorney Leonard Levine. We are, of course, disappointed in the verdict and the guilty verdicts that were returned. We are gratified with the not guilty verdicts, and uh, we uh, hope that the public understands that there are significant issues uh, and rulings that the court made that we think had an effect on the uh, on the jury evidence that we uh, offered that the court would not introduce. He intends to file a motion for a new trial. If that's denied, he'll be appealing. Sentencing for heaps is scheduled for.
for November 17th, and Karen, he faces 21 to 28 years. Margaret, before you go, what were some of the nine counts that the judge declared a mistrial on? Some of the nine counts, oh my gosh, I'd have to go back and look at, you know what, actually, I don't, uh, gosh, I'd have to go back and look at all of them. I couldn't tell you exactly which ones they are at this particular moment, but I will take a look at them and I'll let you know next time around. Well, Margaret, I just want to ask, was there the possibility that this might be the outcome, that it was going to be mixed like this because you're dealing with a lot of different counts, so much nuance to it?